IUCN in, in Europe covers an enormous region. Uh, we work from uh, countries from Greenland, uh, Iceland, all the way to Eastern Russia, from the north of Finland down to the Mediterranean, including the Caucasus. So it's an enormous region with a great variety of ecosystems. Um, there are mountains, we have the Arctic in Europe, large forests, particularly in Eastern Europe. But I guess what is most obvious in Europe and how many people see it is it is a landscape that has been used for centuries, if not thousands of years. People have lived in Europe and have changed the landscape. So a lot of the ecosystems in Europe are no longer, let's say, natural. They are man-made, they are uh, changed, they are modified, and the interaction between the natural landscape, the little bits of wilderness that are still in Europe, and the urban uh, man-made environment is what makes Europe special and different from other regions. There are still some very important areas. We have one or two biodiversity hotspots. The Caucasus has been recognized as an area which is particularly important. The Mediterranean Sea and um, particularly in the far parts of Europe, the overseas territories that are still European territories, that is where the biodiversity is actually highest. Of course, the situation for species uh, globally is not very good. The International Year of Biodiversity 2010 showed us that we didn't manage to reach our target of halting the loss of biodiversity. And unfortunately, this is the same uh, in Europe. 50% of our mammals, 13% uh, of the birds in Europe, 19% of our reptiles are under threat of extinction. Um, it is partially a result of the high urbanization and high industrialization and therefore the use of resources that has maybe been more uh, active and more pronounced than in other parts of the world. While the situation generally is not very good, there are also some really positive stories in Europe. We have managed to bring some species back from the brink of extinction. There are case studies and examples where we've managed through conservation work um, really bring species back to a viable population. Uh, for example, uh, the lampreys are now back in numbers that actually allow the populations to thrive. The Mallorcan midwife toad was a species that was extinct and it is now again living and in many places uh, alive. And the osprey, a beautiful bird in northern Scotland, has basically got back to levels where we are no longer uh, really critically concerned. As I said, Europe is a large region, and of course it's not just large, it's also very diverse. We have 50 countries, we have lots of cultures, we have different languages, um, and as IUCN, it's not an easy region to manage. The good thing is, we have lots of IUCN presence, not just through the Secretariat, but out of the global membership of more than 1,100, we have almost 400 in Europe. So a large membership of IUCN actually works in Europe. This includes countries, it includes agencies of the government, and it includes NGOs. And it means that a lot of the work that we do in Europe, we don't actually do through the Secretariat, but we do through and with our members. We also have a, a large number of specialists, and they provide us with the knowledge to carry out the work and to support what we do in Europe. A lot of the work on the ground, as I said earlier, is done by our members. And therefore, as a secretariat, one of our key functions is really in the policy field, influencing what is being decided at national, but particularly at the regional policy level. So we work very closely with the European Union, um, with the Commission, which is really the administration in Brussels, um, and more and more with the European Parliament, which is really the policy-making body of the EU. But of course Europe is larger than the European Union, so we also work with the uh, Council of Europe, the Bern Convention, which is the oldest convention on biodiversity and natural resources in Europe, and we work with the United Nations. What are the priorities for IUCN in Europe in 2012? We are redefining the program in Europe and that is a combination of strengthening our influence 
on policy. It is working on governance of natural resources, particularly on forests and on marine issues. It is trying to develop a set of biodiversity information tools. Um, the European Red List, this poster is uh, one of the Red Lists that we helped to prepare in the last couple of years. We are working on new Red Lists of species in Europe and we hope to extend that to cover basically all the main species. Um, and last but certainly not least, to work with our members to actually do conservation action on the ground, particularly through our office offices, I should say, in Belgrade and Tbilisi, where we are focusing on cross-border natural resources management in the field of forestry conservation and protected area management.